Praise God. Amen. It's good to see everyone this, this evening. Let's all stand to our feet this, this evening as we get, uh, get ready to worship God this evening. Let's clap our hands. Amen. Let's get ready to sing this song. Those are live streaming with us. Amen. Join us tonight as we continue the revival tonight. Amen. Wherever I am. Come on. Wherever I am, I'll praise him whenever I can. I'll praise him for his love surrounds me like the sea. I'll praise the name of Jesus, lift up the name. My God, we thank you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. My God, we thank you again, Lord. God, can we continue to worship you tonight, God, and honor you tonight, God. We lift you up, O oh Lord, to be exalted, O oh God. We give you glory and praise, my God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. As we slow it down tonight, amen. If you are just tuning in, amen, we welcome you as we continue to worship God tonight. Amen. Let's sing this song, amen. Awesome is the sight tonight as we close our eyes. Lift our hands, amen, and sing with me tonight, amen. Come on. Oh, yes, Lord. Awesome is the sight of your Majestic is your purity, your righteousness shines brighter than the sun.
Yeah. 
Let's worship him together tonight. Amen. Oh, Father, we thank you and worship you. Oh, yes, God, we thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy, God. You are able to move, Lord Father, this evening. Father, we thank you, Lord, we worship you. Donovan, would you lift your voice? Father, we thank you once again, God. God, to be back, oh God, in your house, Lord, to worship you. Father, we lift up, oh God, our needs, oh God, spoken and unspoken tonight. God, you see our hearts tonight, God. Hear our cries, oh God. God, we ask, God, that you help us, God, as we lay it all on the altar tonight. We pray, God, that you move, oh God, supernatural. Holy Spirit, have your way tonight. By the blood of Jesus, oh God, we pray, God, for the sick. We pray, God, for healing and miracles, oh God, that you're going to do, God. We pray for the churches and the nation, God, in the Northwest. We pray, Father, for Pastor Juan and Sister Mona tonight. A Tucson congregation. At Modesto, God, Pastor Nago and Vero tonight. God, in, uh, in the church in Uruguay, God, we pray, Father, that you move, oh God. Have your way tonight in every service, God. We give you glory and praise as we lift your name, O oh God, to the Most High. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You take some time. You greet one another this evening. Amen. I want to welcome everyone this evening to Door Church. Glad that you are here with us uh, in our final night of our revival with evangelist Leonard Williams. Um, it has been a wonderful, wonderful revival. And uh, we'll save the best for last, as they say, but every night has been the best. And uh, God is moved throughout our services, and we are just so thankful for all that God has done in our hearts and in our lives. So uh, real quick, just in the way of announcements, just want to remind you, if you have not had enough revival, uh, we are going to continue to have the revival, or Federal Way is going to continue a revival there with uh, Ralph Blanco. Uh, that will go through Wednesday. If you, can, uh, if you want to go show support Monday and Tuesday, uh, the services start at 7 o'clock, and then be back here for our midweek service at 7 and prayer will be open at 6 o'clock for you to come lay hold of God and uh, prepare your mind and heart for uh, that service. And then looking ahead to this Saturday, we do have Youth on Fire. This, again, is for anyone in middle school, high school, college age. Uh, if you want location information and details, you can either speak to Cody, Joey, uh, or you can go on our website at tdl.church slash yof. And uh, you can find that information there as well. And then as a reminder, this coming Sunday, we are having our Easter service uh, slash communion service at 11 o'clock. Encourage you to bring someone. There's always someone looking for a church to go to. Uh, why not invite them here? And uh, in hopes and praying that uh, they become a part of our church family. And then following that service, we are going to have a fellowship uh, for the remainder of the day, I looked. I saw the weather. It's supposed to be a nice day that Sunday. Uh, so we chose a, a good day to have a fellowship at the park. Fort Stillicum, uh, Shelter 2, that's by the playground. Uh, Kayla will be organizing all that. So if you have any questions, uh, 
if you need, if you can help with potluck, things like that, please speak to her. She's waving her hand, say, yes, that's me, that's me. And, uh, and uh, we're going to have a good time. So if you have any questions, please let me know. And then again, just to plant a seed into your mind, conference, Tucson conference, June 17th through the 22nd. Information is on the back board on a sheet that says Supernatural. That is the conference theme. And I can tell you what, things are leading up to that because we are seeing a lot of supernatural things happening. And I'm not talking about ghosts and uh, cabinet doors opening. I'm talking about God's hand moving in preparation for all of that. So let God continue to work in your heart. Amen. And so if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, I believe there's some flyers there in the back for the Easter picnic, Easter fellowship, and uh, invite somebody, as I said. So with that, we're going to go ahead and take up uh, a love offering this evening for our evangelist. And uh, this is something we do uh, when it comes to revivals, right? And we want to be able to send him home blessed. He's given his all, and uh, we can give our best. Uh, the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 simply says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That it is the will of God for us to be thankful, to show our gratitude. And we have seen and we have experienced many things through this weekend. Normally, people look forward to a weekend to party, a weekend to go on vacation, a weekend to go out and, and uh, you know, waste time. Not that wasting time is, is always bad, but we chose to be a part of a revival. We chose to come and hear from God. We came and we said, God, I want you to speak to me. I want you to move in me. I want you to stir me up and challenge me. At least that's what my prayer has been. And so we have many things to be thankful for because of this revival. Many of you were touched. Many of you were changed and encouraged. But it would be a shame for us to just speak our gratitude. It would be a shame to just uh, go to Evangelist Leonard and say, thank you for coming. Go off on your way. It would be a shame for us to come and uh, uh, have God do what he did in our lives and just say thank you. Let's demonstrate our gratitude. Let's show our gratitude for what God has done. I uh, received a, a text uh, from one of the offerings that were given, and one of them said, Thanks, thank you, God, for what you've done, somewhere along those lines. And here's the offering. Listen, that's someone that is, is showing gratitude. Someone that's taken initiative to say, you know what, I'm not only going to speak it, but I'm going to show it, and here's, here's my gift. Here's, here's something uh, to show my appreciation, my gratitude for what God's done. And so gratitude, I read a quote, gratitude is riches and complaint is poverty. People who are grateful, they may not have a house on the hills, but they're rich in their spirit. And those that are always complaining, don't you always see that they're lacking things in life? And so if you see no reason for giving thanks... I dare say that the fault lies only on you because God's given us many reasons to be thankful for this weekend. And so research, before we take the, the offering, research backs the idea that thankfulness and gratitude are good for the human soul. In fact, Forbes, Forbes article data shows that gratitude promotes good manners makes it easier to build new relationships, improves both physical and psychological health, and might even help you sleep better. Listen, God, what God's done has, has helped produce better health for us. Some of you slept like babies after being prayed for, right? Some of us. <laughs> Some of us experienced the lifting of a burden, chains that were broken, Attitudes that were changed, 
habits that were broken. Right? We experience the hand of God. And so, yes, this goes to show that God is powerful and that gratitude can change us. So let's not just be thankful with our words, but let's, let's show our gratitude by giving a, an offering for our evangelist. If it's going to be an offering, mark it down, offering. If it's your tithe, then you put tithe. If it's for world evangelism, put world evangelism. But let's give. I'm going out on a limb. I've been saving for a new toy. And I'm going to give that amount. Why? Because I need to practice what I preach. Show my gratitude. Saying, God, here's my sacrifice. God, here's my, my token of gratitude. Let's give this evening. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Uh, Sean, would you pray for the offering? You won't leave you like you came. You won't leave you like you came in Jesus' name. Found a prayer to my disciples. For that Holy Ghost of X is still the same. Once again, this is our last and final punch to the face, punch to the gut, in a good way. And uh, I know Evangelist Leonard doesn't like to pick fights, but when it comes to spiritual things, he's ready for it. And just real quick, this afternoon we were able to pray together uh, for his daughter, and uh, just want to report that she, at that point, they were saying that she was going to need surgery uh, to, to help her out, but he just gave the word saying that, you know what, no more surgery is required, no more surgery is needed. So I really believe it has to do with the prayers of the people. So supernatural, right? It's an assault on the enemy or the assault from an enemy. And so we want to fight back this evening. Let's welcome uh, Leonard as he comes tonight. Hallelujah. Appreciate that this evening. Really do appreciate your sacrifice. It was more than just she needed surgery. Uh, I mentioned she had a stroke, but uh, started having a couple more yesterday. But this afternoon, uh, she I spoke to her, and they did some more tests this morning, and come to find out that she has a hole in her heart. And they were going to again do a surgery either tonight or the first thing tomorrow morning. But I spoke to her right before service and she said the doctor came in and told her, we're not going to operate. We're just going to uh, run a camera down your throat and check your heart out and see what the deal is. Uh, and uh, hopefully, believing God, that God again, they know hopefully, God intervened again. God did a supernatural miracle. As I said, they kept telling her when she had her stroke and how she got out of ICU in a day and a half, especially having the surgery on her brain. And they were amazed. But I want to tell you, God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right? He doesn't change his mind. Matthew chapter 12, verse 35 and 36, Jesus says these words. 
He says, a good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth evil things. Verse 36, he said, but man will give an account for every idle word. The word idle simply means words that are spoken in carelessness or in a fit of rage. That, so you're going to give an account for those words. I want to preach tonight for a moment. Sermon I've entitled, The Power of Words. Because we really do not understand the power of our words. Genesis in chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, says these words. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. The darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this evening by the blood. I'm asking you, God, to have your way once again. Lord, hide your servant behind the cross that you may clearly be seen. We are grateful for these that have come, and I pray by the blood. Have right away, God, and strengthen and encourage in the name of Jesus and all God's people said. Let's talk about the power of words. Because here we see in the text, we know, right? And, but our problem is this. We say, well, yeah, it's God. God spoke it, and it happened. God did not need an architect uh, to help him draw up the plans, how uh, he wanted the universe to function, uh, how he wanted to put the stars in the heaven, man, uh, and, the, and the moon and the sun. He didn't need no one. The Bible just simply said he spoke it, and it was. See, the issue of this evening is how I many know we don't ever see words, but we really do feel the effects of words. In 2 Corinthians in chapter 4, verses 17 and 18 says these words. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceedingly and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Paul's talking about the unknown. He says, the things that we see are temporary, but what we don't see is eternal. Ponder that thought, eternal. Because we don't see the words, but how many know we feel the weight of them for a long time? Right? People you say, you know, you say, say uh, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. How many know that's a lie? Because there are people that had had words spoken to them or over them years ago, and they still feel the after effects of those words. They simply never seem to be able to break free. And I'm talking about tonight, I want to deal with curses that have been spoken over you or by yourself. Because everything that happens to you and I, Happens, amen, because of certain things. Many times we deal with it in, this, in the realm of speaking wrongly. And I know we don't always, you know, we can't always, and I'm not talking about positive thinking tonight, right? Oh, I'm just going to think positive. I just, that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about the attitude of your spirit behind these words. Because many of us speak the words, but we speak them um, in the content of hurting someone. Words begin to shape our lives. I can, can still remember certain words that my dad had spoken over my life. And how as I began to grow, they began to shape my life. They began to form my life. So many times people are always, uh, you know, they're struggling because they've been told most of their life, uh, you're never going to be anything. Uh, you'll never achieve anything. Uh, you're always a loser. You always will be. Society says once a drug addict, always a drug addict. But let me know that's not true. 
Not when it comes to the kingdom of God. We have to be careful on how we speak. Proverbs in chapter 12 and verse 18 says these words. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. There's one that speaks like the piercing of a sword. In other words, these words are able to penetrate deep into your spirit, deep into your soul. And they hurt. The after effects. We never see them, but we do feel them. So to say that words don't have any weight or words don't have any power, that's a lie. Because there are people, uh, even this evening, words that have been spoken over you. I had an interesting phone call this afternoon with my daughter. And uh, she's telling me, uh, she said, Dad, I had a strange call this afternoon. And I'm saying, okay, I had no idea who it was. And she began to tell me what this person said. Because she was saying that this individual, and you know, for me, her words, they had, they don't carry a lot of weight. And what I mean by that is simply this. She is not one that I will really consider a friend anymore. They used to be, very, her and her husband were very good friends of ours back in the, in the 80s and 90s when we first got saved. But through the process of time as our original pastor departed, they also departed. And at that point, this relationship of friendship became shattered. I haven't spoken to this individual probably in some 25 years, actually 24 years. But she made this statement to my daughter. She said, you know, I've been thinking about you since late November. And I don't understand why, you know, God was having me pray for you. And th but the moment she said it, I said, that's witchcraft. So that's witchcraft. You have not spoken to my daughter. But immediately I said, that is witchcraft. There is, we think of witchcraft of someone in a dark room with candles burning, right? They got the cards laid out on the table. You got somebody in the back chatting. But that's not what it is. I get it. I understand that, that witchcraft works in that facet. What I'm talking about, because Paul puts his hand on this in the book of Galatians, he says these words, for who has bewitched you? In other words, Paul, what Paul is saying is somebody's talking to you. Somebody's done something to you. Have you ever met someone for the very first time without meeting them before and you did not like them? And you ask the question, why? No doubt. Someone told you something about them, and you don't you like you don't like them before before you even meet them before you know anything about them, because someone sowed a seed in your mind, and that seed began to grow, and how you and I view life, because we always deal with the with the unknown. And how we view life really is important this evening. Proverbs in chapter uh, 15, verse 4 says these words. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perseverance in it breaks the spirit. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. 
How are you speaking? What do you speak? Because obviously Jesus says, out of a good treasure, a man shall speak good things. But many times we don't understand the effects or the potential and the power behind the words that you and I speak. We have no idea. Mention that, you know, back when I got shot, when I was 19 years old, it was strange to me as I began to live for God and God began to show me certain things because I was invited to a place what well, probably one of the largest car shows in Phoenix history back in 1977. But because of circumstances and them still in my car and burning it to the ground, and I can go on and on. But I, you know, the guy who invited me said, just come, we'll take care of you. You don't have to worry about anything. But I made this statement. I said, nah, I'm just going to stay home. I should have stayed home. But I didn't. Went out that night and I got shot. But the crazy thing is this. Before he left on a Friday after work, I told him, I said, listen, read Sunday's paper. And in that paper, you're going to see either somebody died or somebody got shot. The next words out of my mouth were, it's possibly going to be me. You can call it coincidence. You can call it whatever you want. But I believe at that moment, I set something in action I could not deal with or did not understand the ramification of what I just spoke. Well, that night, Saturday night, I ended up getting shot in the face. My head should have been taken off and my shoulders by the police reports. But I had no idea how you and I speak is important. James in chapter 4 or chapter 3, verses 8 through 10 says these words. Listen how James puts it. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessings and curses. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. James says no one can tame the tongue. It is full of deadly poison and evil. What are you speaking? Because you can set things in motion simply by the way you speak. It says, with it, we bless our God and curse our brethren. These things ought not to be so. And so many times we say things. And we cover it up by simply saying, well, I have freedom of speech. I can say whatever I want. I can talk to them any way I want. It doesn't matter. No, you can't. And our problem is because we really don't understand the whole issue about words. Some time ago, I was talking with my pastor about this, and he just simply asked me a question, and I began to tell him about words and things that I was dealing with and thinking about. But he made a statement. He says, you know, you ought to be preaching that stuff because, he said, we definitely need to know the power that are behind the words that we speak. We need to know the power behind the words. Proverbs 18, 21 says these words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it 
will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So here the picture is either you can speak or you can prom promote life or you can curse death. Or you can release death by what you speak. I prefer, you know, I'll be honest. I, you know, I deal with people all over the world, man. I got a couple of friends of mine that are pastors. And one of the things that irks me is to hear these men Men of God that preach the word of God and simply say every word out of their mouth is, I'm broke. We don't have no money. Well, the reality is you never will until you change the way you think, until you change the way you speak. Because poverty is not about how much money. Poverty is a spirit. You can have a multitude of money, even ask a rich man, and they'll say, well, how much do you need? Just a little more. Because they feel they never have enough. Well, if I just had a little more, how much do you need? And we never come to that understanding about it. But I want to tell you tonight that God has come to set the captives free. God comes to break uh, the bondages of curses and, uh, you know, ancestral curses. These are things that have been uh, around for many, many years in our lives. Unable to walk away, unable to be able to grasp, why am I like this? Why is this coming up? Why do I feel like this? Why am I thinking like this? What are you speaking? And we never really come to that understanding that the words I speak, have an ability to change the conclusion of my life. People all time begin to simply just don't look forward, don't look any further than the here and now. It's amazing to me how people would say, Pastor, can you pray for me to get a job? Sure. But within the same breath, they'll say, but no one's hiring. You just canceled that out. Well, I, you know, I've tried, I apply for jobs, but nobody's hiring. I don't know about you, I see you hiring signs everywhere. Problem is you don't want to work. It ain't that they're not hiring. It's not convenient for you to work that job. Because I mean, no, this is the generation of you owe me. Right? This is a generation that, you know, you, uh, young people won't get out of bed for more than $25 an hour to start. That's insane. We have to come to that understanding. I refuse to be or to live the life that I grew up. I refuse to live that way. I told my kids years ago, I said, you will never live the way I lived. You will never grow up the way I did. Struggling. Constantly, not enough. Granted, there was 12 of us, but still. And we don't grasp this. You can change the conclusion 
by what you speak. It's like people, they, you know, I said this family in my church, and they would always say, Pastor, why do we do outreaches? Why do we do revival? Nobody ever comes. Well, listen to your attitude. Why would somebody come? Rather than believing God to pour out revival, we simply say, nobody ever comes. Nobody ever gets saved. Pastor Greg uh, Mitsuya made a statement, or he talked about a, a story, that when he was in Australia, when he'd taken a church in Australia, he said he'd gone to a place, and the people were telling him, Pastor, nobody wants to get saved here. They all know nobody wants God. And he said immediately he spoke these words, and he says, that's unacceptable. And he began to contend. So they went out, and immediately people began to get saved. If that is your mindset, that nobody will respond, then no one's going to. But if you change the conclusion of you, change the way you speak. One of my greatest stories in the Bible is the book of Ezekiel. If you look at Ezekiel 37, we know that the Bible says, and Ezekiel was taken, taken up by the hand of God, set in the valley of dry bones. There is no life, and but I want to ask you, as you look around your city, how do you view people? Do you view them uh, not in the way we see them, but how God will see them? Because all around there are people just like the book of Ezekiel in chapter 37. These bones are white knuckle dead. There's no light, there's no breath, there's nothing in them. There's no movement. But in Ezekiel 37, verses 3 through 6, says these words. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel's task was too big for him. But yet, when God asked him the question, can these bones live? He said, Lord, only you know. But he tells him, he says, prophesy. The word prophesy simply means to preach. Preach to these dry bones. You know, if that would have been us, most, if all of us would have said, Lord, these bones are dead. There's nothing there. Why would you have me preach to them? Why would you even allow me or have me to come here? You see, one of the issues is many things because how we speak, we have killed them. Now, I'm not talking about people in general. I'm talking about circumstances of life. People always begin to say, you know, my marriage stinks. Man, I hate my marriage. I hate these people. And we begin to kill everything around us. My question is to you, though, can these things that have died around you, can they live again? Can God breathe upon those dead things in your life and command it to live? He didn't do this. God didn't do it. He told Ezekiel, do this. Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy. I want you to speak life into these bones. Again, you and I, we can speak life into something that doesn't exist. So how do I do that? Change the way you speak. 
change the way you speak. God, I believe. This Ezekiel 37 is also a picture in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Listen to these words here in Genesis 30, in Genesis uh, chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Man became a living being when? Not when he was formed, but he became a living being when God breathed the breath of life into him. This is what Ezekiel did in Ezekiel 37. He breathed the breath of life. And as he breathed that breath, God says, breathe to the breath. It's the old breath. You can speak life, but you cannot Give somebody something you do not possess yourself. You cannot give them anything you don't possess. How do I get over this? How can I change the circumstances and the outcome of my life? Very easy. Change your vocabulary. Change how you view things in life. Lord, you said that I'm capable. You said that I can change the circumstance of my situation by how I speak. And all around us, there are people just like Ezekiel. Dead, dry, no life. And God says, prophesy to them. You want to change the outlook of life? You want to change your financial circumstance? You want to change the heart of people? Begin to speak life. In John, in the book of John, in chapter 10, we know the verse. It's a very familiar verse. We quote it all the time. That the thief cometh not except to steal, to kill, and destroy, but I come to give you life more abundantly. I refuse to live below the standard God has for my life. I refuse. To live that way. As I said the other day, my mother always told me the same old thing. Well, you don't need nothing. You have everything. And she said, but your brothers, your sisters, they, they don't have. I said, they chose that life. That's, the, that's what they want. I made a decision to break out of that. And I allowed God to simply do what he wants to do in my life. But I refuse to grow up. I refuse to allow my kids to grow up the way I did. That's not going to happen. And I, even to this day, my daughter will always say, Dad, you said you didn't want us growing up like you. I said, true. But now you're an adult. Now you're going to have to make decisions for yourself and how you view life. I had to stop her some time ago, my daughter, because I kept hearing her speak and, you know, granted it's truth, but it, she would always try to beg the point that well, I had brain surgery, and I'll, I'll tell you that even though that was true, that irked me. 
And I'm like, dear, I understand it. Yes, you did. But you don't have to speak it all the time. And she quit speaking like that. Because what she was doing was constantly reminding herself that my life began to fall apart. I'm not well. No. That doesn't exist in my vocabulary. How you and I speak is important. It's important. You're going to have to make some adjustments. Years ago, I asked Pastor Mitchell a question. Let me make sure my alarm don't go off. About our marriages when I was pastoring. Because there were certain ladies in my church, and regardless of what their husbands did, it was never good enough for them. You know, they were coming to church. They weren't, you know, they weren't totally sold out. But they were coming. And all I would hear these ladies say is he's a bum. He's just, he's lazy. He doesn't want to serve God. And on and on. But I asked Pastor Mitchell these words. I said, Pastor Mitchell, how can we change the conclusion of our marriages? He says, first off, you have to cancel out the debt that you set. What he was saying was this. You cannot speak negative about your marriage. Change the way you speak. And you're going to see, he says, you have to cancel out. To revoke simply means to cancel out. He says, you're going to have to cancel out those debts, those things that you had already released. So you're going to have to revoke those. And I said, well, how do we do that? He said, you simply change how you view life and how you speak. I'm going to release you from these things that I have already set in motion. Proverbs 18, 21 again says these words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. We know James says the tongue is unruly, full of deadly poison. One man had said these words. The tongue is a small member, has no bones in it, but is still strong enough to break a spirit and a person. No bones, but still strong enough to break a heart and an individual just by what we speak. I don't know about you. I choose life. I want life. I want to see the hand of God. Pastor was talking about watching the supernatural because God is doing something different. There is a movement of the supernatural taking place. But it's not going to continue on until you and I begin to understand that we have the ability to cancel out any debt by how we speak. You can breathe or you can speak revival or you can simply just watch it. It's your choice. close. There's a couple of words that should never come out of your mouth. And that is never and always. It's always like this. It never changes. It's never going to change. 
I've been like this. You know, it's like we, we always talk about, well, this is the hand of cards that was dealt to me. Right? I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. So, yeah, but, I, you know, I, this is just the hand. This is the best it's going to get. Who says? Because if you don't believe God, it's never going to get any better. If you don't begin to change the way you view life, the way you speak, it's not going to change. Don't allow those words to come out. Don't allow the word divorce to come out of your mouth. Because you'll set it in motion and you cannot do anything about it. Tonight, God is going to move supernaturally. He's going to reverse some family curses. He's going to break some strongholds. If you and I will allow him to, let's bow our heads this evening. Every head bowed this evening, every eye closed. First off, perhaps this evening you've came to this revival. You're not saved. You're not right with God. You're backslidden tonight. You're simply saying, Pastor, I'm not right. And if this God you're speaking about is capable, if he's able to give me new life, I want it. I'm tired of my own life. I'm tired of living the way I'm living. I'm tired of not having enough. I'm tired of things not going well. Tired of being broke. Then do something about it. Change the way you speak. Change how you think. You're capable of creating your own world by how you speak. You're capable of creating your own world by how you speak. And this evening, you're here. You're not right with God. You're not saved. You're backslidden. But you want to come to Christ. Would you lift your hand this evening? Anyone under the sound of my voice, unsaved or backslidden, this evening, let God help you. This is the beginning of a new life. This is the beginning of something more than what you have. Anyone tonight, before we change? If not, then I want to change the order of this service. I want to speak to you and I. Words have power. I'm not going to reiterate once again all that I've said. But I'm going to tell you, you can change, you can change the outlook of life by how you speak. You can speak things in, into existence. You can speak blessing or cursing by your words. Matthew 12, Jesus says, out of a good treasure of a man's heart, he brings forth good things. Out of an evil heart, man brings forth evil things. But the amazing thing, he says, we will give an account for every idle word. Because the reality is, most times, we say certain things in a fit of rage or anger. And then we want to excuse ourselves by saying, I'm sorry. The problem is it's too late. The damage is done. You just set something in motion. You just set something in motion. And you're not aware of it. 
But tonight, we're going to begin to take dominion. We're going to believe God to do something new, something different. You can walk out of this place with a new hope. You can walk out of this place looking to a brighter tomorrow. Lord, this is what you said. I want to open these altars tonight. You want to come find a place to pray. These altars are open this evening. We're going to pray in a moment. But these altars are open. You come. Let God help you tonight. And please don't leave the altar if tonight. The Stay at the altar when you're done praying. God, we thank you by the blood. Every day that we I thank you, Lord, by the blood. With every breath oh, I breathe, let the rain of your presence fall on me. Everywhere that I go, Lord, let your presence that have been spoken and curses that have been inflicted by ourselves or by someone else by what they've spoken. I said words, I could hear them still when my father would speak certain things. And I began to watch it shape my life. Never looking ahead, never looking to see or, be, or looking to become anything else but a loser. But when I got saved, thank God that he was able to break that mold, break that curse, a family curse upon my life and set me on a path that gives me a life more abundant. Because this is who God is. God says, I come for this purpose. Not to keep you in bondage. Not to keep you from his goodness. But that you could experience a far more fruitful lifestyle. God is going to break in tonight. There's people here tonight. As I was preaching, you found yourself 
back at home, back in your country, your place, and you can begin to see things in God, things that have been spoken, things that were, had been done. God was revealing these things because he's going to set you free. God, I need you to break in. Why don't you lift your hands this evening? Lift your hands this evening. We're going to pray. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Father in heaven, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I break the curse of inheritance upon my life. I break self-inflicted curses that I have spoken upon myself, upon my home, upon my children, and upon my church. Lord, I thank you that you're able to break in on me, to cause me to see the damage and the problems that I have created by my words and by the words of others. I close the door to every family inherited curses. I close the door to self-inflicted curses. Father, I thank you that you have come to give me life and give it to me abundantly. And I accept your promise. I expect, I accept all that you have said. Your word is truth. And I hold it into my heart. Father, and I'm asking you right now, Began to move even now. Began to set me free. And give me a peace and a joy that I no longer have to stay bound to the powers of darkness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Worship him and thank him tonight. Father, by the blood, Father, by your blood, your blood, Father, Father, by the grace, your mercy that endures, God, your grace, let's give him a clap off in this evening. Father, we thank you for the liberty of your spirit. We thank you, Lord. Breathe, O oh God, upon us, O oh Lord. God, we call on you. We call on you tonight. God, it has been all over you. And there's things that I said begin that was spoken years ago, and yet that weight still holds. The pain and the sting of words. Just by ignoring them doesn't simply mean that they're going to go away. You have to allow God to work within to remove that stain. And the devil's told you over and over, this is the best it's going to get. You can't expect nothing more. That's a lie. You can change tonight by what God says, not by what we feel. Not by what the devil tells us, but by what God says. Lord, this is what you said. And as you begin to hold to his word, as you begin to search it out and allow God to speak to you, you're going to find out that there has been more that has been broken in your life than you can imagine. You will always face an obstacle. 
Like no matter what you did, there was always some type of resistance. But God just broke that. You're going to find yourself entering into another relationship with God. A different place, a different mindset. Why? Because God has broken through. I understand the struggles. I understand the words that have been spoken. But you no longer have to bow. They don't have to control your life no more. Follow me? At night, in the tears, you said, Oh, you're never going to get any better. Yeah, ain't nobody cares. Ain't nobody likes you. And on and on and on. Nah, you're such a liar. Get out of my face. Do not hold yourself to a lower standard than God has for you. Father, we thank you tonight by the blood. God, I'm asking for your grace, your mercy right now. God, breathe by the Holy Ghost. Touch him by the blood. Father, by the grace of your way, oh God. You can have as much as God that you want. You don't always have to be in the background lurking and just wondering. Wondering, why, well, why can't I be like that? Why can't I get there? You can't. But because of the past, because of past failures, past hurts, you can't get past that. This has always been an issue of letting go of the past and moving forward. But you can never move forward in God until you let go of the past. It doesn't happen. You're down on yourself way, way too much, dear. I'm never good enough. No matter what I do, it's not good enough. It's not the way God views it. Those are words that people have put on you. And the stigma of these words have held you and captive for so long. You're going to have to change the way you think. I, God, I thank you by your blood. God, I'm asking your grace. God, touch her by the Holy Ghost tonight. Touch her right now. Salamando, break every bondage, oh God. I pray the life of God to flow within her. Oh, God, give her newness of hope and smile. Spirit, oh Lord, renew her, oh God. Oh, Rebe, Kalalamando, Rebe, Kalalamando, Rebe, Kalalamanda. Father, by the blood, Alalamando, Robo, Bobo, Kalalamando, Rebe, Sidamamando, Rebe. God's plan is bigger than what you see. And you have battled, you have struggled with things from the past. It's almost like you're constantly battling a spirit of witchcraft and divination because that's what we were taught. But God says, I'm going to show you a new way. You can achieve more. You can be more than you ever can dream of. It's not by coincidence. You are where you are. And you struggle to look for more in God. Because what the devil tells you is you can't attain that. That's out of your league. That's not for you. That's for someone else. No. 
You can have all of God you want. You can take all of his promises and apply them to your life. I'm not going to be like this no more. I refuse to be like this. And as you begin to do that and begin to speak life into existence, then what you normally knew it, it's going to become a very clear path. You're going to watch the hand of God move sovereignly upon you. And you'll look back and you'll say this, this is surely the hand of God. Only God could do this. Because you asked God recently, God, show me. I want to see you. Well, you're going to. Don't be so hard no more. We all made bad decisions. But that's the problem trying to get past those bad decisions because the devil will never let you go. He brings them up constantly. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That confession, God wipes out our debt of the past. He doesn't hold it against you. Father, touch him by the blood. I pray by the grace of God. Move and minister by the Holy Ghost. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. Give God a clap off in this morning. God, we thank you by your blood, your grace, your mercy, oh God. You look at life, and all you see is life is what's here. You can't see beyond that. It's like one day to the next. And yet God has been trying to show you something more. If you'll rely on him and trust in him, that's the issue, the issue trusting him. If you'll trust him, if you'll allow him to have access to your life, everything else is going to change. You follow me? I'm not talking about perfection, because we're not. I'm talking about simply allowing God to have access to your life so that he can make you something more than you can ever dream about being. Because that's the plan of God. Yeah, there's been hurts that you have done to yourself and to others. But God is going to change that. You hold it against yourself way too much. You're going to stay stuck in this mode until you allow God to have access. But God's going to break in on you on that. Father, I pray, touch by the blood. God, move and minister by the Holy Ghost. Shalalamanda, Rebekalalamanda. Father, I'm asking by the blood of the Lamb, minister by the grace. Let's give God a clap offering tonight. Actually, I'm sorry. You, you can be seated. You can be seated. And you don't have to stand. I didn't say return to your seat, but you can be seated. No, I'm just kidding. God's not done. The up and down of life, the roller coaster of life, it's 
so many times. Yeah, you said, I want to get off of this ride, but it just seems to keep you there. Unable to move forward, unable to get off. You think totally different. As I said, you ever meet someone that is, you never met them before, but now when you meet them, it's like, I don't like them. Because something somebody said, and those words have engraved themselves into your mind. I know what they say, but... You don't know me. You don't know my circumstance. I don't need to know your circumstance. And I don't mean that in a harsh way. All I need to know, all you need to know, is that God loves you. He's going to mop up, wipe up some tears. He made this statement. He said, what? God, what else is there for my life? If he was to show you, it would blow your mind. But he's going to release some peace in your life. You don't have to put on a fake joy. God's going to give you some real joy here. Because inside, what I see is someone who has been shattered by words. And regardless of how you try to masquerade it and how you try to ex act like it doesn't exist, it does. What's your fault? that's what the devil tells you. It's your fault. No, it's not. People do things and say things just sometimes because they're mean. I want to hurt you because I'm hurting you. And that's the goal they set out for. But God is going to turn it all around here. Struggle with He's the God that turn, turns it around. Father, I pray tonight, touch her by the blood. God, move and minister by the Holy Ghost. We thank you by the grace of God. Minister right now. The devil's taking you way back here. It's taking you back all the way to your childhood. It's taking you on that wild trip without a ticket. And it's in the past of your childhood that he keeps bringing up and telling you how much of a failure you were. No. As a child, we have, we don't, we can't blame ourselves for things that happened when we were a child. That doesn't exist. I'm not saying your childhood didn't exist. I'm saying we cannot ex blame ourselves for things that happened in our childhood. I can tell you how many nights, how many times you wanted to call it quits. And only because of the grace of God you were able to grow. 
and mature. But it's the past that haunts us. And no matter where we move to, no matter where we're at, our past will always come. But you have to learn to put it under the blood and leave it there. And when you put it under the blood, it's done with. It's at the foot of the cross as Jesus' blood ran down that cross and became a puddle at the very bottom of that cross. That's where the redemption came from. That blood that was shed is the blood that's going to break every lie from hell of the past. God's going to begin to give you a new spirit can begin to give you a joy unspeakable. Something you cannot muster up. Something you cannot bring out of yourself. Only God can do that. There's someone that is constantly bombarding Constantly saying things that hurts. God's going to set it free here. Father, I pray tonight by the blood, touch her by the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the grace, the mercy of God. Breathe. Ida bobo rebe kalala mama mando rebe be Ida mama nda rebe kalala mama I said it just came through here Make up your mind in or out Let God do what he wants to do If you've said this word that's not for me. No, redemption is for everyone. If you were the only person on planet Earth, God still would have sent his son for you. But you think just like I used to. Now, that ain't me. I can't do that. But little did I know that when I had, when I asked God to come into my life, my life was going to take a rapid change for good. If you allow God to have access, your life's not going to get worse. It's going to get better. You struggle. Anger is not your best friend. God wants to set you free. Let me have your hand. Why don't you pray with me? Say, Father in heaven, I'm asking you right now to forgive me of my sins. I'm asking you right now to remove this anger, my disobedience to your word, to your plan, and your purpose. Father, I thank you for the blood that you shed on the cross for my sins, that I can have eternal life with you. Father, I pray the blood right now. Touch him by the Holy Ghost. God, move and minister by your sovereign grace. It always hasn't been easy, dear. Even to this day. You look back, and you can see a path to where you were at, to where God brought you. And it's almost you can't not even comprehend. But because of the past, because of something in your past, you're still linked to it. 
You have to be willing to move forward from that. Those things that happened in the past, you have no control over. God didn't bring you this far simply to leave you alone. But he brought you for a purpose in mind. It's going to take more than you simply coming. What it's going to take to break that curse of the past is the blood Because Jesus shed his blood for you. Not so the, these, the, these, the, the pain of the past is, should torment you, but that you will have life. You can see it differently. That's God's plan. You have to let it go. You have to let them go if you're going to be. Father, by the blood I pray. God, touch her by the grace of God even now. We thank you, Father, for your grace. Let's give God a clap offering tonight. Father, we thank you by the blood. Thought you were going to escape? <laughs> you know you weren't. Your God's going to begin to show you some things. And I know we're joking and everything else, but there's some things God's going to be re begin to reveal to you. Your life is going to take a fast turn. And not in a bad sense, but you're going to be able to track the hand of God. Because there's things that God's already placed in your heart. And your question was this, God, but when? We don't know the timing. And sometimes you question yourself and you ask this question to yourself, is this me or is this the God? Well, that's what the devil wants you to believe. It's you. Because if he can get you to believe it's you and not God, then he's going to stifle that very dream God placed in you. But he's going to allow you to show you some things. It's going to get smoother and smoother. You're going to begin to reveal. He's going to reveal certain things. As you begin to speak to people, they're going to respond. To the gospel because God's placed a spirit in you that's not you he gave you a spirit of a soul winner again in spite of all the ups and downs of the past and the in and outs God's plan is still real father I thank you tonight by the grace of God I'm asking you by the Holy Ghost I want to pray for a couple people very quickly. There's three of you. You have a pain in your shoulder. And this pain goes to your shoulder, from your shoulder. And it's almost like if it goes across your back and it stops in the middle. The other one, this pain goes down your arm. It travels down your arm. And as it goes down, it's, you can feel the throbbing of it. And you've questioned yourself and you asked yourself this question. What is this? What did I do? What did I pull? Nothing. 
It's demonic. The other one, this pain starts in your hand. It's like your hand begins to throb. It begins to act like it's asleep. And it begins to travel up. You want to come on and pray for you very quickly this evening for these three things. I want to pray for you very quickly. Who is it tonight? You need to come. How long has that been there? How long has that been? Four months? How long has your pain been there? A year. What's the other one? Oh, there you go. Okay, you say oh, four months. How long has it been there? We're going to believe God. I said, I can't do this. I don't, I, I don't even know. Unless God shows me. And if God shows you, that means he wants to deliver you, right? He wants to heal you. So why don't you say this? Say, Father in heaven, I take dominion and authority over this pain. You lying, tormenting demon. You will release my body and my spirit. The blood breaks your strongholds. Yet the blood sets me free. This night, your, 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 your power and stronghold has been broken. This night, my body will be healed. Father, touch him by the blood. Loose him right now. Touch my brother by the Holy Ghost. Father, touch him right now by the blood. Let's give God a cap off in this evening. Shalalama mama nalamanda. Check yourself. Where's, where's the pain? Is the pain still there? Still there? No difference? Move it. Any difference? Father, complete miracle right now. I command even now, right now, a supernatural touch. Touch him right now by the blood. Kalamando rebe kalalamandai. We thank you. What's the difference? Hmm? Just a little bit? Just keep moving. It's going to leave. What's the difference, Pastor? Any difference, Pastor? Okay. So is that hurting right now? It hurts, but it's the mobility. Yeah. That's the Father, by the blood, I speak a miracle, God, to the rotated cup by the blood. I command complete healing right now. Salamander, loose him by the blood. Salamander, rebe. Hey, man, keep working. It's going to do it. What about you, dear? What's the difference? You can't really tell? Okay, so is that pain still there? So then you can tell. It's not going to be there. So what couldn't you do with your hand or your wrist? Yes, it's just. But the question was, what can't you do? Father, complete miracle, I pray. God, show her right now. Touch her by the Holy Ghost. Shalamando Rebe Kalalamanda. We thank you in Jesus' name. Give God a clap off in tonight. Father, we thank you. Listen, I really do appreciate the opportunity to come. Actually, many. Pretty many. <clears throat> Your life is going to take a quick right turn. And you already know this because God's already shown you. And it's not, it's not just I'm here, I'm going to be. No, 
God is going to do an accelerated work in you. Because there's certain people only you can reach that God wants to reach. And if you will simply ask him to lead you, it's going to begin to show you these individuals. And if you'll go and, and begin to speak God's word, they're going to respond. But understand, it's not you in, its, in itself, but it's God. And you've been asking God. You've been trying to find the mind of God, the will of God. God, what do I do? God, what do you want me? God, what are you going to? Well, God's going to begin to reveal it. But the question is not, is God going to reveal it? The question is, will you obey? That's the key. Because many people, God reveals his plan, but they don't obey. One, it's like, nah, that's just me, man. I'm thinking crazy. No, nah, you're not. It's God. And God's going to show you. The very things you begin to ask him, they're going to begin to come to pass. Father, I thank you tonight by the blood upon my brother. God, I'm asking your grace, your mercy tonight. Let's give God a clap offering this evening. Listen, I, again, I really do appreciate the church here in Lakewood. I appreciate the relationships that have been established. I really do I appreciate your pastor, his wife, his family. Amen. So known him for many years. And, and so a lot back then, well, I believe we were, well, I'll say this. We're just acquaintances. Today, yeah, he's my friend. <laughs> he really is. He really is. I really do appreciate them, man. And, and Erica, you know, come on. She just needs some help. So just help her. But uh, I really do. No, I'm just joking. Joking all aside. But I really do appreciate the opportunity to come. And that's all I have tonight is Pastor Cousins. Give God a clap offering. Amen, amen. What a wonderful way to end the revival. Again, I encourage you, make decisions to be in the house of God. Don't just be Sunday morning goers. The more you're in his house, the more God can speak to you. And the more that God can speak to you, the more you will know him. And the more you will know him, the more you are more willing to do things for him. So let's be willing. Let's have the ear to hear, the eye to see. And let's put to practice, into practice, all that we've learned, all that we've heard this week. Amen. You show your appreciation to our evangelist uh, before he goes. He's got an early morning flight. Uh, but before you leave, uh, say your goodbyes. Keep him and his, and his family in prayer uh, that God will continue to bless the ministry that he is a part of. And so stick around, fellowship with one another, have some coffee. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. We're going to be dismissed. Uh, uh, if we can have Sean, would you lift your voice? Dismiss us.